Hey guys, it's so good to see you. <laughs> uh, um, if you're new here, my name is Naima, and I'm trying to film one video like this a month where I kind of just talk about things that God showed me, things that I learned in the month, and share that with you because I think that our testimony and our lessons and our experiences um, can really work to build each other up and encourage one another, and that's something that I hope to do. I hope to encourage and um, show you, like, you, you might not be the only one struggling with something. Like, everyone struggles with things, and, like, just the outcomes of those um, lessons and just kind of put it out there. A lot happened in November. God did so much in my heart, and there was a lot of spiritual attack, and there was a lot of like being humbled and there was a lot of trials and a lot okay not that much crying actually better than october the point of this video is to be more like a podcast style so it's not going to be a lot of editing and just kind of like we're talking here are some moments throughout november that i thought i'd share that kind of would give you an overview of my month and yeah keep in mind i'm sharing some of these things that are kind of vulnerable um, in hopes that you see the entire picture, which you're never going to be able to actually see. But I'm trying to show you more than just the smiles all the time and, like, the happy moments. So, here it is. Look how pretty. Sometimes you just got to put on something cozy. You need to get your hair up. You need to drink a full cup of water. Prioritize. Stay focused and just get it done. There is no wasting time. Get your frozen pizza in the oven. Let's go. <sighs> um, school is just really hard and I just feel so discouraged and like there's just so much pressure on me and I know that's not how I should feel because it's God who's working. Not Naima. Um, I don't know guys. I just started driving and my hands took me to my um elementary school playground. Guys my tire pressure is low and I can't go beyond eighty miles. That's what's new. Guys, what is this? What am I what am I doing? Do you know what you're doing though? And no one knows what they're doing, so I don't even, I'm not even scared. And I just feel so weak and so tired to the point where like, I don't know who, what my personality is without coffee anymore. I really don't. See, that's the message I get because I need to do it. Whatever. <sighs> that's how I was feeling, so. Speaking takes a lot of energy right now. It's really a discipline for me right now, and I know that this is spiritual attack, and I, I'm not even joking with you. I was crying for like three hours straight yesterday to the point where I was feeling nauseous, and I was feeling my headache my head pounding it was just like one of those type of cries it was one of those type of cries so i don't know i have a lot of homework to do and i do want to go to the gym tonight so let's see what happens okay just spent seven dollars on the iced sugar cookie milk latte and i think i've put myself in enough situations this week where i've given that bitterness to people that don't deserve it at all. Okay, here it is. Oh. But, okay, let's see. This okay. tastes so weird. Four out of ten. I don't actually like it that much. Ten out of ten because, um... <laughs> I'm gonna give it a 9.3. <laughs> I haven't put anything together, so I don't really know what you just saw, and it kind of scares me, like, I don't know. Okay, this list is pretty long, so let's get ready. 
Okay, the first thing that I think I learned in November is that people rarely leave your presence feeling neutral. That made me think, okay, how do I want people to leave my presence? And how can I be more like Jesus in that way? Like, how did people leave Jesus' presence? And how do I want people to leave my presence? And how is that going to change how I act? Um... And so it was more of like a reflective thing and I don't have like an answer for you right now. Um, I think I still need to do some reflecting, but just that fact that like it just, whoa, like blew me away. People rarely leave your presence neutral. So it's kind of scary that you have an effect on people and you might not know it. It's scary, but it's also cool. Okay, this is huge. God loves me no matter how productive I am or I'm not. Because I'm reading this book, Redeeming Your Time. It's really, really good. I'm actually listening to it. I'm on chapter four, I think. And in the book, it just talks about... I won't spoil it. (laughs) But it talks about how we don't have to work from a place of trying to get God to be proud of us. We don't have to work out of, like, that kind of thing. We get to work because God loves us, like, no matter if we finish everything on our to-do list or if we don't get to half of the things. Like, we are not worth more if we are, like, more productive one day or we're not one day. Like, God still sees us the same. Um, And obviously, He wants us to work hard. But for me, I guess I just made it very, like, if my to-do list wasn't done, it affected my worth and it affected how I felt about myself and it's just not good. So like for me, knowing that God loves me no matter what, no matter if I'm here from there or if I'm done with a video or if I'm not, like just those are examples, he loves me the same, which is amazing and I was like, oh, wait. And that fact actually, I think, makes you more productive because you don't feel like you're working for, oh, God, to be proud of you or something because he's already, he already loves you so much. Okay, this one, (laughs) uh, I should smile more. Like, I just don't smile enough, that's for sure. And I think part of it is because I'm kind of like, my mentality is like, kill or be killed. So, like, I have to be, like, tough and, like, on guard. So, like, I can't smile at people because I'm in the zone. And I don't think that's how I should be. Um, I think I should just make it simple and smile more because we need more smiles. And the thing is, when you start smiling at people, they actually usually smile back. So moving on to what psalm has been my anchor and, like, what psalm I have been continuously turning to. Like, I read it every single night or I try to. Um, It's Psalm 131. If you remember from last last month's video my rock like psalm was psalm 42 and it was just very appropriate for everything that I was going through and it was I'm not joking with you it was like I needed that psalm to take deep breaths I needed that psalm to get me through some nights I just needed that psalm for so so long and it was my anchor like it it got me through. I have a new psalm now, though, and this one's also very good. Um, it's called, I have calmed and quieted my soul. Oh, Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. And I think that just God really spoke to me through that in the way of, like, um, Naima, you are 17, and just, just, it's so simple. Like, it's just Jesus. Because I think oftentimes for me, I'm like the overthinker. I just complicate things for myself, but I love it when it says, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. Like, knowing where you are and knowing what to take on and knowing what to leave for later, very, very important. Um, and just... I, le- I, lo- I have calmed and quieted my soul thinking about the idea of practicing solitude, practicing silence, um, like how Jesus did going on to mountains and quieting and calming his soul so that the voice of God could speak to him. So that, why did I just say voice of God? So that God could speak to him. Another thing, uh, I actually led a singleness workshop for a woman's retreat that it was so last minute like I knew a week in advance and I was so stressed out and I did so many outlines and at the end of it I was just like you know what holy spirit come like I 
God, you just speak through me in that moment. Like, I had practiced. I had rehearsed. I had talked to people. I had gotten opinions. I had been in the Word. I had been praying, worshiping. Like, oh, I got a concussion, like, minor concussion. So then I, all these things happened, including spiritual warfare. <laughs> all of these things happened. And at the end of it, I, I went to do the workshop, and there were, like, maybe 30 or more people there that psalm really got me through also is like i have calm and quiet in my soul i do not occupy myself with things too great for me because for me it's like i'm 17 the lord brought this opportunity to me i'm going to take it but it's not god is not pretending that i'm a pastor or like a preacher or anything he just wants to use my story he wants to use my experiences and he wants to use what he has taught me through all of the things that i've gone through for others, for the encouragement of others, to build other women up. And so, like, thinking about that, that God knows where I am and God knows what I'm capable of doing. And, like, that's all we can bring to the table. And so, at the end of it, I just kind of, I really did not have a plan. I had an outline that was, like, one page long for 30 minutes of talking. And, and at the end, I was just like, God, you lead the conversation. I don't know what I'm doing right now. And the spirit came. Like, he spoke through me. I wasn't, I mean, I was really, really nervous. Um, But in the moment, I was like, oh, this is fine. Like, I'm just talking. And just, oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit took over. And it was beautiful. And it was a moment of, like, wow. Like, God is in control. It was really cool. Okay, work on being present, organize your time so you can be present in the moment, write down everything on your mind so that you can enjoy those moments. Again, that's with um, the book that I'm reading, Redeeming Your Time. If someone was like, hey, can you write an email? You are going to keep that like in the front of your mind. It's going to go over and over and over and over again so that you don't forget. But what the author is suggesting to do is to just write it down. Everything you have to do, write it down because it frees up that part of your brain so you're able to be present and you're not spending all of your time thinking, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I need? And it's just stressful. Also, track your week by hour and figure out your priorities to make sure the most hours are going to the highest priorities and not just like what you feel like you want to do and i'm still working on this but it just occurred to me like oh what are my priorities oh why am i spending so much time here if this is a priority and so just kind of checking my priorities has been something that i've been doing this month and i'm still doing okay this is amazing proverbs 19 verse 21 many are the plans in the mind of a man but it is the purpose of the lord that will stand for me i can go on and on and on with like a vision i have or like an idea and for me, it's just really humbling and necessary to think about, okay, well, I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of plans, but what is from the Lord? Because ultimately, that's what matters. That's the priority, and that's what will stand. Because I can have as as many other projects that I want to do and ideas, but what is the Lord guiding me to do? And that's just been something. Um, in Proverbs nineteen twenty one, I was just like, oh my goodness. It was so cool to read that, and I'm still trying to really discern God's voice in that way and just kind of just focus on what's important um and move my time in the direction in the way like God wants me to noise limits our creativity so that's something like I've been practicing just being bored I don't have snapchat I never really liked it anyways and Instagram I don't really use as much again it's not been like a temptation for me that's huge to go on social media but i'm just really practicing boredom because like if you've ever thought about it like your best ideas are probably like when you're in the shower or like on the toilet and why is that because you're bored and because you have like your mind is just thinking okay i saw this tiktok and this shook my mind basically what it was saying was bring your weaknesses to god before satan brings them to you mind blown because really think about it, like, if you're struggling with something, which, should I say this? <laughs> which, for me, I was struggling with, like, I really was wanting, I was really wanting boyfriend, and I was really wanting that affection, and so, like, Satan used that to distract me from God, when I could have so much it was it would have been so much easier if i had said 
God, I'm having this like really strong desire for this, which is causing me to kind of not focus on you as much. God, please help me. Like, what should I do in this situation? Turning to God instead of turning away from him kind of out of like embarrassment or whatever you want to call it, because really Satan will bring that to you and you want to bring it to God before he brings it to you so that you don't fall into temptation. You don't this, you don't that. Um, God is really patient and that's something that is just amazing about his character like he obviously is perfect and amazing but his patience is like something that i've been really just in awe of recently and thinking about my own life and how many times like i've failed or like ran away from him and then came back and just thinking about his patience and for the first time it clicked in my mind where it was like oh wow wait god is so patient with me therefore i can be so patient with other people and that really clicked for the first time and I was just like, whoa, like, that's so crazy. Like, when I'm taking care of my younger brother, like, I can have so much patience because think about how much patience God has for me. Um, so that's crazy. Also, knowing how to rest is important. Not resting, even though resting is important. But I realized, like, you need to know how you feel rested. So some people feel energized by other people. Some people feel energized um, by walking some people feel energized by being alone for me it's more like being alone like taking care of myself doing doing my eyebrows just things like that make me feel more energized um and obviously resting in god being still knowing that he's god but i'm talking about just like actually actually like what are you going to do to rest instead of running away from god either in anger in sadness whatever just be like god how do you want me to handle this situation also, uh, something crazy is to have a conversation <laughs> and don't angry read things. One of my classes, they started talking about God and immediately, like, I just get a little bit angry because I don't want God to be portrayed in the wrong way because it's a big deal. Like, you're talking about God here. And so we started talking about it and then I thought that they were saying, like, something completely other than what she meant and so i met with my teacher actually and i was praying so much about like god how do you want me to do this how can i do this in a god honoring way that is not like oh angry christian lashes out no that's not what i want to be that's not what jesus would do like jesus would come and have a conversation and ask questions and try to really understand okay is this what's really going on and i talked to her and she was like oh the, no that's completely not what i'm saying and she re-clarified it to the class that all happened because of a conversation if i had gotten angry and just sent angry emails and not listened to her and not like just done it the way that jesus wanted me to do it it would have not been good also this is like how she's viewing um christians like that this is she's saying oh wow this this christian girl is coming to me and talking really nicely um and maybe that's just like that's just really Christ-like. And so in a way, that's how you can show the love of Jesus with people. And that's through your actions. And I think like in church, we were talking about that too. And I was like, oh shoot, like I need to work on like just like being more Christ-like to people because people do are watching what you do. Your just like posture as a Christian speaks volumes about your faith. And uh just I just need to be way more generous like put away my pride and be kinder for sure and smile more and be more gentle um and there's so many things but just like being more Christ-like having conversations instead of getting angry yeah and the last thing I think that I learned is that seasons are really short and Ecclesiastes even says in chapter 3 there's a time for everything. Everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to so a time to keep silent and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate a time for war and a time for peace beautiful for me it's like okay i'm in this season it might be uncomfortable i might hate it it might be really difficult but what is god trying to do also oh my gosh can i tell you something else i was this close this close 
close to homeschooling, okay? But that's what the enemy will try to do to you. He'll try to discourage you so that you're not in the place that God put you. But no, 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 no. Stay right there. Like, there's a song, and it's like, oh, wait on you. And it's like, I'm gonna wait on you. And then it's like, worship while you wait. And then at one point, he literally says, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. And it's like, Sometimes, like, when we're, when we're in a season, when we're in somewhere, when we're in a place, um, it gets tiring, it gets exhausting, and you are really discouraged. You're like, what is going on? I feel like my strength is not there at all. Why am I here? I want to leave. This is terrible. I don't like it. The people, no. The, and you feel like that, and that's kind of that's kind of like that moment where you really just have to dig deep because I feel like for so many of us, we're in that middle place. And, and if Jesus were here, he would say, stay right there, stay right there, a little longer, a little longer. You're going to see what I'm doing, and you might not, but this is where you are, and this is where I've placed you. Stay right there. And I don't think that applies for everyone. Like, obviously, pray about, well, it does, but in the case of, like, homeschooling, for example, like, you might pray about it, and it's different for everyone, but I think that applies to everyone in the sense that, like, we're all in certain seasons, and sometimes in those seasons it gets like kind of tedious seeming you don't see any fruit like being bore <laughs> you don't see fruit you just see hard work you see toil and then it's just like stay right there stay right there wait god is doing something you might not see it but god is working god is always working and also he works all things together for the good of his people so boom yeah there were definitely times in the month where i felt very very discouraged and, I mean, considering, like, I almost went to homeschooling, I was like, I can't do this, I can't do this. <laughs> but in those moments, it was just so important to remember, like, who renews our strength? God. Who restores? God. Who will make a way? God. Who will be my fortress? God. And what is he trying to teach me? Let's find out. Ooh, is God working? Yes. Are we going to see it? I don't know. I don't know. We don't have to see it. We, we have that confidence. And if you don't have that confidence, pray for that confidence. You know what I mean? Well, I hope that this served you in the way that God intended it to. I hope you are feeling encouraged. Comment down below any... Oct or no... <laughs> what month are we in? <sighs> Comment down below November lessons that you had maybe or um, anything you want to comment and who's ready for Christmas. Me. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and Jesus loves you so much. Thank you for being here. God bless. <laughs>